The first part of this video explained how time is being created by the atoms themselves in a very simple process using the wave particle duality of light combined with photon electron couplings. Put very simply, the light emitted by an atom now is going to be absorbed by another atom later on, and this is the fundamental process that creates the time continuum. Every atom in our universe creates its own time and space, even the individual atoms of the observer. Because of this, the individual observer is the only true reference frame, because they are creating their own time and space relative to their position and momentum. The wave particle duality of light, or electromagnetic radiation, is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. We have a measurement problem, or uncertainty principle, because the quantum particle will only have a position in time and space if the wave particle function collapses. If the observer does not collapse the wave particle function into a moment of time, the quantum particle will only have the momentum of its own wave particle function. At a fundamental quantum level, the observer is the observed within his or her own created space-time. Therefore, the more accurately we know the position of a quantum particle, the less certain we are of its momentum. And if we know its momentum very accurately, then we can't be quite sure of where it is. This is because to observe the quantum particle, we create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing the wave particle function into a moment of time and space that is part of the observer's own created space-time. This can explain what the observer actually sees. In this diagram, a laser beam is sent through a slit. The observer will then adjust the slit so less of the light can pass through it. The observer will see the beam get narrower and narrower as the slit is adjusted closer. But when the slit gets to the quantum level, the light will start expanding into a quantum wave particle function. When this wave function comes in contact with an object or observer, it will collapse into a new moment of time and space. In this way, creation is being created continuously. This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. In quantum atom theory, we live in a universe of multiple space-times, and each space-time is governed by the Lorentz contraction of time. The greater the mass or energy of an object, object, the larger or more rapid the particle wave function collapse. This will increase the number of photon-electron couplings, increasing the delay factor, and time will slow down relative to an observer in the object's own created space-time or reference frame. In this theory, infinity is not a mathematical paradox, but an actual reality of our universe. Because the wave function collapses into a moment in time, and also into a quantum particle, we have the infinity of time and space. This can explain the mathematical problems of quantum electrodynamics. At every junction or coupling on a Feynman diagram, the calculations are infinite. These infinities can only be cancelled out by a process called renormalization. I believe we have these infinities not because there is something wrong with the mathematics of quantum electrodynamics, but because we have no fundamental understanding of time. Sir Isaac Newton thought time existed as a thing in itself, and that time is connected to motion. But if time exists, in itself, there must also be a process creating new moments of time that are also moments of infin infinity. In quantum atom theory, each coupling on a Feynman diagram represents such a moment in time, and this is why we have the infinities that have to be cancelled out by renormalization. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero everything is radiating photon energy continuously. From each photon-electron coupling, 
electromagnetic radiation will radiate out in light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Each wavefront will be quantized at the level of the Planck constant. Because it is only takes three variables to explain a light sphere, we have no need for extra dimensions or parallel universes in quantum atom theory. Therefore, the observer will see a dynamically evolving universe in three dimensions, expanding out in all di directions. All waves in three-dimensional space will vibrate or oscillate, creating harmonics. These harmonics will continuously resonate, creating harmonic fractions of themselves in cycles and similarities of ever greater complexity and diversity. Because these natural harmonics mimic music and have a fundamental symmetry, we have a universe full of beauty in which each part is a fractional self-similarity of the whole, creating its own time and space. An understanding of time can explain how we can have finite harmonic standing waves within infinite space. The electromagnetic spectrum is infinite, therefore our universe must be an infinity, but just like a violin string, which is bound at both ends by wave, by the wave function or standing wave, will be bound at both ends by a moment in time by a quantum particle in the form of a photon. In this way, each moment in time creates its own harmonics. The medium for the propagation of these waves is light or electromagnetic radiation. Variations in the temperature of the object's environment will lead to harmonic waves of different frequencies. The process of constructive and destructive interference of these waves will be the mechanism causing them to cancel each other out or superimpose, amplifying in diversity and beauty. In this diagram of an atom surrounded by photon-electron couplings, Feedback from other atoms will create sets of infinities. The reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of the continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles. Each set of infinities will be a set of fractional self-similarities creating their own infinity of time and space. This can explain why there is no centre or outer limit to our universe. There can be no centre or outer limit to infinity. Each fractional self-similarity will be governed by the law of the conservation of energy. In an isolated system, the total amount of energy remains constant and cannot be created or destroyed, although it may change form. This theory is very simple, but I think it is also very beautiful. In this theory we have the free will to create our own reality within the dynamically evolving universe of Einstein and quantum mechanics and classical mechanics of Newton are united.